Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina wa nabiyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Ya Rabbana laka alhamdu kama yanbaghi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanik. Uh, Bismillah. We, started, we will start today insha'Allah by continuing uh, Surah Al-Kahf. Uh, we are uh, on Ayah 18. And we saw that last time that uh, those uh, young men, this uh, uh, fleed with the religion, they didn't want to uh, be affected by the, uh, the emperor, the king or the people. So they ran away in order to save themselves and to keep their faith and Iman as strong as it was. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, made them, directed them to a cave and he prepared that cave for them. So when the uh, when the sun would go from uh, the uh, the well, when it will rise up, it will incline away from their cave uh, on the right. And when it sets, it will uh, again pass away from them to the left. So the, this was preparations. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala prepared that cave for them. Allah goes on and says, وَتَحْسَبُهُمْ أَيْقَاظًا وَهُمْ رُقُودٍ وَنُقَلِّبُهُمْ ذَاتَ الْيَمِينِ وَذَاتَ الشِّمَالِ وَكَلْبُهُمْ بَاسِطٌ ذِرَاعَيْهِ بِالْوَصِيدِ So, Allah is saying, and you would think them wide awake, because their eyes were open, while they were deep asleep. And we turned them to the right and to the left while their dog stretched his four legs at the entrance. If you have a look, if you have looked at them, then you should have turned from them in flight and have been filled up by terror. So we said the sun will miss them when it rises up and when it sets down, they were sleeping, but their eyes were wide open. So this is subhanAllah something that if the eyes are closed for a long time, which in their case would be over 300 years, then when they would not be able to, to see when they open them, if they can open them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is turning these people, these uh, young men right and left. Why? Imagine there is a sick person who is bedridden, who cannot move. After two, three weeks, then he would have skin sores, he would have muscle problems. So, uh, so those people, those young men, they are turned so they don't have these skin problems. They don't have these muscle problems during their 300 and over years of sleeping. And what happens to their dog? Their dog was at the doorstep at the entrance of the cave, so no one can get into them. Only if you had a look on them, you will run away out of fear. They trusted God and he miraculously saved them. He protected them. They fell asleep for centuries and they were saved from that tyrant emperor, from that tyrant king. وَكَذَلِكَ بَعَثْنَاهُمْ لِيَتَسَاءَلُوا بَيْنَهُمْ قال قائل منهم كم لبثتم؟ قالوا لبثنا يوما أو بعض يوم قالوا ربكم أعلم بما لبثتم فابعثوا أحدكم بورقكم هذه إلى المدينة فلينظر أيها أزكى طعاما فليأتكم برزق منه وليتلطف ولا يشعرن بكم أحدا So and similarly uh, we awakened them that they might question one another. They would look at themselves and they will answer uh, what's going on. 
what is going on. How, how, how many years? So said as people of them, among them, how long have you, have we remained here? And they looked at themselves and they said, we have remained a day or a part of a day. And they said, okay, your Lord is most knowing of how long you remained. So send one of you with this silver coin of yours to the city and let him look to which is the best food, the pure food, and bring you provision from that food and let him be cautious and let no one be aware of you. Now let's start with the deep uh, understanding of the ayah. The word ba'athnahum wa kathalika ba'athnahum. The word ba'athnahum means or refers to resurrection after death. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used this word here to indicate the long period they slept. Okay? So when they, uh, when they asked each, uh, each other, how many years, how, how long did you sleep? They said, yawman aw ba'da yawm, a day or part of a day. Why did they say so? Because they looked at themselves, they did not find anything different. They were young and they stayed young. Their hair was not gray and it stayed uh, the same way. So they said, it's not important how long we slept. Because they nothing changed for them. So, Look at this, uh, at this thing. Uh, it's not important to argue about the uh, things that are not important. Stop, stop arguing. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, أَنَا زَعِيمٌ بِبَيْتٍ فِي رَبَضِ الْجَنَّةِ لِمَنْ تَرَكَ الْمِرَاءَ وَإِنْ كَانَ مُحِقًا So, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, is guaranteeing a house in paradise, in a special part of paradise, for that person who does not argue, even if he, he is right. And we all know that Sayyidina Muhammad, وسلم, the way he used to talk, his words would be counted. He used to use jawami'ul kalim, a few words that would give a lot of meanings. So the point is, stop arguing. Do not argue. So here they said, it's not important how long we slept. Let's not talk about this. Allah knows exactly how long we slept. But what was important, as I mentioned, for them now is that they are hungry. They want to eat. So when they suggested that someone goes to buy, to use the silver coins they have to buy some food, he said, The word azka means good, delicious, but at the same time, pure, pure. And this is a real sign of taqwa. When we, when we want to practice taqwa, we, ha we have to have it in all, we have to have it in all um, our actions, in everything, we have to have it in everything, in actions, in food, in our money, our money should be should be pure. Our actions should be pure, and for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala only. Uh, everything, everything should be for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So, get 
some pure food, some good food. But make sure that nobody sees you. Make sure nobody sees you. They are not sure that the, uh, the uh, things have changed because the people are looking for them. So they slept only. They slept only for a few, a few seconds, a few minutes, part of a day. So they they slept only for a short period of time. That's what they think. So they are sure that people are looking for them and they have to be careful. They, they have not to, they don't have to draw attention to themselves. So just be, just be aware, be cautious. If we look at this, we, we understand something very important that we have to, when we have tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we really depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then what is going on? Then we have to take necessary precautions and depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we cannot just say, okay, I am depending on Allah and he, he will save me. You cannot say that. You have to take precaution. You have to start being aware. So you cannot say, I'm depending on him, Allah, uh, and he will save me. No, you have to take measures. So why did they, were, uh, why were they so uh, cautious? Because they said, إِنَّهُمْ يَظْهَرُوا عَلَيْكُمْ يَرْجُمُوكُمْ أَوْ يُعِيدُوكُمْ فِي مِلَّتِكُمْ وَلَنْ تُفْلِحُوا إِذًا أَبَدًا Indeed, if they come to know of you, you will, you will, uh, they will stone you. Or they will force you to return to their religion. And what will happen after that? And never would you succeed than ever. So they faced death because they refused to worship the false gods. They refuse to worship anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were true believers and they wanted to save their, their hearts because they are seeking for the day after. They are seeking for their reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. So this is what was their concern. They did not care about dunya. They did not care about anything. No distractions, just Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they faced death because they refused to worship these false gods. So they ran away. And when they woke up again, they said, we have to be careful not to get caught by that tyrant king, that tyrant emperor and his men. So the lesson here is, do not throw yourself into harm. Stay away from it. Keep safe. Your soul is an amana. Save it. It's not only your body to take care of. You have to take care of your soul also. And how do we take care of our souls? Just know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you this amana, so you have to take care of it. You have to keep getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to nourish your soul. 
Send salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Read Quran. Be with righteous people. Learn about your religion. Learn about uh, the uh, the life of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Learn about the companions. How they lived. How they acted. How how they stood firm with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are at an age now that we have to be very strong with our faith to face all those arrows that are being hit directly against us, against Muslims. So take care of your amana. Because when you cannot take care of others, if you yourself is not strong enough, you have your family as an amana. But you have to be strong to take care of your amana. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help always. And just be sure that you cannot fulfill anything without, uh, without the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot do anything without the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So get yourself prepared. Get yourself ready to, to do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to do in this life. To fulfill the uh, purpose of your life. Alif Lamim, am hasib al nasu an yutraku an yakulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun. There will be Fitan, there will be tests all your life. But you have to be strength, strong. Allah will test his servants, his people, just to know who is going to be a winner, who is going to be a loser. So be careful, get yourself prepared, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you. But what you have, you have to be, you have to be careful. You have to start the uh, first step. And then you depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah will help you. So, what happened now? Those young men were saved. And Allah wants the truth to be revealed now. So he says, وَكَذَلِكَ أَعْثَرْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ لِيَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ وَعْضَ اللَّهِ حَقٍّ And similarly, we, we caused them to be found so that they who found them would know that the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is truth. So that everyone up till our our day, up uh, till the day of, of, of judgment, everyone will know that the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is truth. مسجدا. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused them to be found so that everyone would know that the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is truth and that the hour is, uh, uh, there is no doubt about the day of judgment, about the hour. When they ask Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the hour, he says, وَمَا الْمَسْؤُولُ عَنْهَا بِأَعْلَمَ مِنَ السَّائِلِ The one who is being asked does not have more information about the one who is asking. No one knows when is the hour except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that was when they disputed about amongst themselves how uh, about their affairs and then they said, construct over them a structure. Their Lord is most knowing about them said those who prevail in the matter. We will surely 
take for ourselves over them a masjid. So this is how uh, they were discovered. That was because of the coin. No one accepted to take the coin in return of the food that that young man went to buy for his friends. So the salesman uh, sent him from one to another and everyone said, oh, what is this money? We don't know this money. So they couldn't recognize the, uh, they, they couldn't recognize this money, people. Also, something strange happened. The young man himself could not recognize anything around him. Centuries have gone by. Everything is different. People are different. Shops are different. Merchandise is different. Uh, the structures are different. So the sellers refused to take the coin. And they sent him from one to another until they thought that he has found a treasure. And he was forced to go before the bishop. The, the bishop. We know earlier we said that the uh, 300 years ago when uh, they uh, uh, ran away, people were pagans, but later they became Christians. So the bishop asked, asked him, what is this, what is his story? But before, before the man answered, he said, where is that emperor? And it is said, Wallahu alam, that the name of that emperor was Decius. And this person died um, about 250 CE. So we no nobody, nobody knows uh, that. Uh, this person, except someone who, who lived with him. So they told him, they said, he has died centuries back. And he told them the stories. The bishop could not believe the story. So he said, take me, take me to, to the cave you are talking about. So the young man took them, took the bishop and a few people to the cave. And they saw his friends. They saw their cloth and they realized, they found out that they are really of that era. The bishop and the men left. And after that, all the young men died naturally after they were discovered by people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused them to be found so that everyone is sure that Allah's promise is true and that there is no doubt about resurrection. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give victory to those who truly believe in him, to those who sacrifice for his sake. To those who do not get distracted by dunya, by nafs, by shaitan, by anything. They are real, true believers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they wanted to, to keep their heart pure and nothing in their heart except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They run away. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Muhammad in Ayah 7, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, in tansuru allaha yansurkum wa yuthibbit aqdamakum. O oh, you who believe, who, who believe, if you support Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will support you. Allah will give you victory. And how do you support Allah? By being obedient servants, by following the orders, by accepting anything that Allah has ordered you to do and being away from anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to be away from. So this story is a sign that the promise of Allah is, is truth. So let them know that there is no doubt about Allah's victory. There will be 
a day that Allah will give you victory. Just stay firm. إِذْ يَتَنَازَعُونَ بَيْنَهُمْ أَمْرَهُمْ So they began debating about what should be done with them. So several ideas were given. Some of them said, فَقَالُوا بْنُوا عَلَيْهِمْ بُنْيَانَ So one group said, let's build a monument to honor them. Allah knows all that happened. We don't know, but we need to honor them. Others gave other opinion until, until a group said, قَالَ الَّذِينَ غَلَبُوا عَلَىٰ أَمْرِهِمْ لَنَتَّخِذَنَّ عَلَيْهِمْ مَسْجِدًا Those who won the debate said, we will build a place of worship here. Actually, this is a true story that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept their remembrance till today and until the day of judgment. It will stay there. Their remembrance will be, their story will be told from generation to generation to generation. سيقولون ثلاثة رابعهم كلبهم ويقولون خمسة سادسهم كلبهم رجما بالغيب ويقولون سبعة وثامنهم كلبهم قل ربي أعلم بعدتهم ما يعلمهم إلا قليل فلا تمار فيهم إلا مراء ظاهرا ولا تستفت فيهم منهم أحدا so say, some, some said they were three and the fourth of them being their dog. They will say they were five and the sixth of them is their dog. It's only an estimation. Some say they were seven and the eighth of, the, of them was their dog. So say, O oh Muhammad, my Lord is the most knowing of their number. So it's not important. Allah knows the number. None knows the exact, none knows exactly how many were they except for a few. So do not argue with them except that you have a solid knowledge. There is a lesson here, and we mentioned that last time. Speak with knowledge or keep silent. If you are asked a question and you don't know the answer, just say, I'm, I don't know the answer. I will check the answer. I will ask someone who knows the answer. If you are not qualified to speak, then keep silent. Do not argue about something that you are not sure about. So do not discuss something if you are not sure about, but do not argue about something that knowing it would not benefit and not knowing it would not harm. The most important thing is the story. Young men ran away, uh, believed in Allah, and they ran away, so Allah saved them. This is the, mo the most important thing. It's not important the names of those people. It's not important how many are exactly, how, how, how many were they. It's not important. It's not important the place. It's a cave, any cave, a cave. But what is important is the truth. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had specified time, or so people uh, had specified time, so people would say, oh, this is only for that time. This story is only for that time. It's only a story. If he specified the names, then people would say, oh, this, is, this story is about so and so. If he specified the number, then they will say, this is the number. That's, that's only about the, those people. But 
Allah kept these things unknown for a reason, that this story might happen to everyone. It might happen to everyone. Anyone can be in their position. So the lesson is be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will be with you. Kun ma'allah yakunillahu ma'ak. Kun ma'allah yakunillahu ma'ak. Be with Allah. Kun ma'allahi fi raha yakun ma'aka fi shidda. Be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the time of ease. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be with you at the time of hardship. And do not ask them. Do not ask them as they do not have the, the knowledge. Do not ask your people who came and they, they, are, they are judging you. They are asking you about, how, about the story of these people because they don't know. They do not know. They do not have the knowledge. And we mentioned uh, uh, also that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ this is Surah An-Nahl, ayah, ayah 43. And also, the same ayah is repeated in Surah Al-Anbiya, ayah 7. Ask the people of knowledge if you do not know. But, Ya Muhammad, do not ask these people. They don't know. So you, when you want to have knowledge, when you want to ask someone, don't ask anyone except that you are sure that this person has the knowledge or he can get you the, the exact knowledge, the exact answer, the correct answer. You have to know who to ask. And it is said that at the end of time, so many people would give fatwas. So many people would give fatwas, which is very wrong. Even if they don't know, they will give fatwa. Someone would ask them, they will immediately answer without thinking about the question. And this is the end of time. So, do not ask except the people of knowledge. They don't know, don't ask them. وَلَا تَقُولَنَّ لِشَيْءٍ إِنِّي فَاعِلٌ ذَلِكَ غَدًا إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ And never say, I will do anything tomorrow. I will do this thing tomorrow. Never say that. Except you add, inshallah. If Allah wills. So inshallah. When you want to do something, say inshallah. And when you say so, then you are as if you are saying, Ya Allah. Min hawli wa quwwati, wa bi hawlika wa I am, I have no power. You have the power. If you will that, if you will that thing will happen, then it will happen. If you will that thing that not to happen, then it will not happen. I don't know. I am depending on you, Ya Allah. This is one of the ways that we depend on Allah. Just keep mentioning, keep saying, Insha Allah, I want to come visit you. Insha'Allah, you never know. You never know if you can, uh, if you will wake up or not. You never know if you if your car will uh, act funny on that day or not. You will never know if you can make it on the road or not. You you never know if this will happen or not. Just say Insha'Allah. Always have the 
company of Allah with, it, with you. Insha'Allah. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Thank Allah for everything good that happens to you. Alhamdulillah. وَاذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ إِذَا نَسِيتَ وَقُلْ عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَهْدِيَنِي رَبِّي لِأَقْرَبَ مِنْ هَذَا رَشَدًا And remember you Lord when you forget. Suppose that you said, okay, I'm going to do this tomorrow or today after an hour. And you forgot to say, inshallah, just say it whenever you remember it. Insha'Allah. So remember, remember your Lord when you forget. Say perhaps, my Lord will guide me. وَقُلْ عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَهْدِيَنِي رَبِّي لِأَقْرَبَ مِنْ هَذَا رَشَدًا So say, perhaps my Lord, my Lord will guide me to what is nearer than this, to the right conduct. So guide me, Ya Allah, to something better to what I had in mind. We don't know, we ask Allah. And that's why whenever we want to do something, we would do Salatul Istikhara. We want to, whenever we want to have a decision, then we will do Salatul Istikhara. So ask Allah. Ask Allah. Now, Always say, اللهم إني لا أحسن الاختيار فاختر لي ولا أحسن التدبير فدبر لي يا الله, I don't know how to choose. You choose for me. I don't know how to manage my affairs. You manage them for me. Because I trust that whatever you want for me is the best. I don't know what's best for me. Sometimes we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something to happen. We ask him for something to happen. But when it happens, we say, oh, we wish it did not. That's why from now on, stop. Say, say what you want, but add at the end. Ask Allah for whatever you want, but add at the end. If there is khair in that thing, ya Allah, and you know, you know best, I don't know. اللهم إني لا أحسن الاختيار فاختر لي ولا أحسن التدبير فدبر لي. So remember Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Sometimes we want to save something, we don't want it to to get lost. We uh, so we hide it. We want to hide this thing. It's so precious. We don't want to lose it. And what happens? We forget where we hide it. So you keep searching and searching and searching and searching. You don't find it. And there is a way to help you find things. Uh, if you lose them, read Surah Wa Duha. Subhanallah. It's, it, it helps. But in order not to forget where you put your things, which is something that, we, that happens to all of us, be aware when you want it, the, the second you want to put it, to leave it from your hand to put, to put it, then say, Bismillah. When you say Bismillah, then you are aware, your mind is aware of the place that you put it in. So just say Bismillah before putting your stuff here and there, before hiding your, your stuff or before losing your stuff that you hide. Okay. Subhanallah. So, وَلَبِثُوا فِي كَهْفِهِمْ ثَلَاثَ مِئَةٍ سِنِينَ وَازْدَادُوا تِسْعَةٍ So now they remained in their cave for 300 years and it, it also nine so 309 years <clears throat> they stayed sleeping in that uh, cave قُلِ اللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا لَبِثُوا لَهُ غَيْبُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ أَبْصِرْ بِهِ وَأَسْمِعْ 
ما لهم من دونه من ولي ولا يشرك في حكمه أحدا. Say, Allah is most knowing of how long they remained. No one knows, but Allah. He has the knowledge of the unseen. The knowledge of the unseen of the heavens, the knowledge of the unseen of the earth. He has the knowledge of the unseen of everything. How sleeping is he and how hearing, how seeing, sorry, how seeing is he? Allah never sleeps, but he always sees everything. He always hears everything. So he, this is something that we have always to keep with us. Allah is overwatching us. Allah knows everything. And at the day, at the day of judgment, he is going to uh, present everything for us in the record. ما لهم من دونه من ولي ولا يشرك في حكمه أحدا. You have no one to depend on except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have no one to, to take care of you except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what's good, what is unique, what is amazing, what is miraculous is that Allah gives the orders, Allah gives the rulings, and no one, no one shares anything with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He by himself does everything. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين والميت إن شاء الله next week السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته